Hey y'all, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to be speaking a little bit about visualizing the electric field from a collection of point charges. And previously we derived the potential from a collection of point charges or any charge distribution. So the potential um, to any point, point P, which is at the tip of a vector R, is equal to this. And in here we got rho, which is our charge density, and we have an infinite sum, and we have P sub n, which is the nth Legendre polynomial, and the argument is the cosine theta. And here is a diagram basically defining all those variables. So the shaded blob is our distribution of charge. This point here is the origin. R prime is the distance from the origin to the small area of charge we're considering, or small volume of charge, whichever depends on which dimension you're working in. Theta is the angle between R prime here and R, and R was just the distance from origin to R point P. And we started this previous video where we derived this by knowing that the potential um, as a function of one over big R, um, and big R is the vector from the small amount of charge we're considering to the point P. So there's all our definitions. <laughs> what we're going to do here is expand this sum out to n equals 2. So we're going to plug n equals 0 in, we'll have a term, and then we'll plug n equals 1 in, we'll have another term, and n equals 2, we'll have another term. <laughs> so what we get is this. This first term here only depends on 1 over r. This second term here depends on 1 over r squared. This third term here depends on 1 over r cubed. And basically any further than that, you're going to get pretty close to 0 um, if your r is any significant amount of distance away. Even this term here is going to be very small. So the first term we're going to call the monopole term. This second term, with the r squared in the denominator, we're going to call the dipole term. And the third term, with the r cubed in the denominator, we're going to call the quadrupole term. Now, you might know that the electric field, as a function of this little r vector, is equal to the negative gradient of the electric potential. And you might have seen in previous er, in textbooks, you might have seen the electric field from a point charge drawn as a vector field, and you might have saw the dipole field drawn. But what does it look like for the quadrupole field? And now I'm going to refer to a program that will help us visualize that. Okay, so here we got a electric, an electric field due to one positive point charge, Q1. And we can see it's um, circularly symmetric. It would be spherically symmetric if we were in three dimensions. And we can see the electric field vectors point outwards. And you should note that we're not looking at the magnitude of the vectors. Um, because the magnitude of the vectors near Q1 would be so big and the ones out here would be so small that effectively we would just see the big ones at the center. So um, this plot is just showing us the direction of the vectors, not their magnitudes. So if, over here on the left side, I can control whether, well, I can make four charges total. We already have one and I can control whether they're positive or negative and what their positions are. And I made it so that positive charges are green and negative charges are red. So we can change charge one to a negative charge and it points inwards. So that's what the electric field outside of a electron, say, looks like. Okay, let's see what a dipole looks like. I have charge two at position one, zero. Um, first, let's make charge 1 positive, and then we'll make charge 2 negative. So that's like an HCl molecule. 
and there is the dipole right there. Um, we can see the dipole points along. Um, it always points from the positive to the negative charge. Well, the dipole does. That's how chemists draw it, at least. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the electric field vectors are pointing the opposite way. But anyways, um, that's what the electric field from a dipole looks like. Now let's see what it looks like for three-point charges. So I have Q3 at 1, 1, and that's what it looks like for three-point charges. And that's also what it would look like for, say, a water molecule, where you have two positive hydrogen charges and a negative oxygen charge, well, partial charges. But still, the field will look um, the same in shape. OK, now let's introduce a fourth charge. And that's what the electric field from a quadrupole looks like. How beautiful is that? That looks like two fields from two dipoles. And that's how you can think of a quadrupole. It's just two dipoles next to each other. Or, you know, four point charges next to each other. Um, so you can see that there's this vertical um, part here, which you can think of as coming from Q1 and 4. Or actually, Q1 and 4, um, would their curly lines would be horizontal to them. Um, but similarly, you can go the other way, consider Q1 and Q2, um, and these curly lines are due to those. One, also Q3 and Q4. Anyways, I don't want to keep talking. Um, that's what the field of a quadrupole looks like. I can change the positions of the charges so we can see what's inside. If you guys are interested and you own Mathematica, I will send you this program for free. Just send me a message. It's pretty fun to play with. Um, yeah. So that's the electric field from uh, multiple point charges. Similarly, we could do an octopole field, but I think you can start to see the hierarchy of um, what uh, the nth field, nth pole field would look like. Um, and if I could, I would draw this in three dimensions, and I've been working on that um, in this program, but it's a little more difficult. So, I hope you guys found that useful and insightful. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.